Ukrainian summer offensive has failed and General Delusiony has basically said so himself. In an essay he wrote, he basically explained what Ukraine would need to make this war a quick war, to end it quickly, and obviously air superiority, artillery superiority, and stuff like that. He has taken full responsibility for the failures in this counteroffensive. Even though Ukraine was able to liberate 14 settlements, everybody knows that was not their goal and they were expecting bigger results. He him he himself said that he was he underestimated the Russian uh, trenches, the Russian defense. He overestimated the Ukraine the Western of training without what the West had. So he took responsibility for it, which was a shock in my opinion, because you see obviously in the West, United States, United Kingdom, France, uh, how they train their generals is basically where the whole you take responsibility and accountability for the mission what went wrong what went right how can we do it better next time however in the east russia china iran north korea you're, you're not going to catch that you're not going to catch generals taking responsibility the generals are going to blame their subordinates and the subordinates are going to blame their subordinates and etc they're basically just going to blame until they literally can't blame anymore probably get to the private so that's basically how those countries operate and ukraine has been under western training for a long time ever since 2014 so delusiony has taken responsibility for it all the men dead that were killed wounded we don't know the exact estimates we don't know the exact uh, number of casualties however all the men that were killed wounded however big or small the casualties might have been were all on him and he took responsibility for the counteroffensive being a failure so that's good on his part. With a lot of people were bagging on the Western training, saying the Western equipment sucks, Western training sucks, Western everything sucks, and it's not that. It's giving a man a gun and telling him to clear a room. You train him exactly on the right CQB, but you don't give him any bullets. The West didn't give Ukraine what they needed to successfully take what the West taught them and do it successfully because the West did not give them air any uh, jets what they needed they did not give them artillery enough artillery so the west was ex training their soldiers and how they operate but when the west operates like this they always have air power backing the soldiers up and ukraine didn't have that so i don't know who thought in the west that were training the soldiers who thought the ukrainians were going to be able to do this without the importance how important air power is without giving them air power that was a mistake on the West Paul as well because, again, giving a man a gun, training him CQB rightly, but not giving him any bullets, not going to be able to work, and he is going to be defeated. Moving on to Kyrgyzstan, we see that both sides have basically stayed where they were. The Ukrainians did make some gains on the first. However, this situation is looking worse and worse for the Russians. It is looking very bad for the Russians because every day the Ukrainians are attacking them with drones and everything points to a major Ukrainian offensive in Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan is the least fortified, least mine of part of the Russian territory that they have in Ukraine. And also they have the worst quality guys guarding Kyrgyzstan because obviously the uh, river, the Dnieper River, they didn't think the Ukrainians were going to do some massive uh, attack. Now they have their forces tied up in Zaporizhia and uh, Donetsk, Luhansk. So now they have their forces tied up there. So Ukraine, I believe, if they do a massive attack, will achieve more success than they did in their counteroffensive, their summer counteroffensive, which they liberated 14 villages, which obviously was not Ukraine's aim. So we are not going to go over the Robotine sector because every nothing has happened. Uh, the Ukrainians did manage to gain some ground on the first, but besides that, nothing has happened. I think Ukraine has given up on Robotine, Ellis area, and Takamak. So moving on to Andivka, the Russians have launched many attacks near Andivka. Obviously, you see, on the second, they took that piece of land, and some people are saying, some pro-Russian sources are saying they have entered uh, Stepove, and fighting is going on there. No ground taken today. However, there are reports of Russians capturing strongholds, Ukrainian strongholds. However, these are pro-Russian reports. So unless we get some video photo confirmation, we are not going to take these seriously. Just as we want to take Ukrainian claims seriously without photo or video confirmation. Volodol, the Russians were mocked in Volodol for doing a 
tremendously disastrous attack earlier this year. However, Russia has done another attack. But instead of attacking Volodar head on, they've gone to these fields. And what has happened? Disaster. Lots of videos. These are the videos of the Russian tanks, BTRs, all their equipment being destroyed by the Ukrainians. As you can see, the Ukrainians knew what was going on from the very beginning. These geolocations were literally at the edge of the city that the Russians have under their control. I'm not going to try to pronounce the name because I'm it's probably going to be an epic fail, but this city right here. So the Russians were right here, okay? The Russian vehicles right here. Later, we got geolocated footage from the Russians of them around these tree lines. However, that was yesterday, and today we've received absolutely nothing except for another video of Russian vehicles being destroyed by Deep State. So basically, the Russians on having no success in Volodol. I think the Russian dreams of capturing Volodol are oh, not anywhere close to reality. I don't think the Russians are going to be able to capture Volodol anytime soon. And obviously, they don't want to focus most of their attention on Volodol because the Battle of Antifka is going on and they're losing heavy losses just as the Ukrainians are. Anyway, guys, make sure to like this video, subscribe, join the fact on me, comment your thoughts down below. Again, YouTube, I do not condone killing, violence of any kind. I'm simply reporting on the unfortunate conflict going on today. Thank you.